Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be doing a small sketch by this riverside in Prague. And um, halfway through sketching, it started to rain, so I only had the chance to complete this whole sketch with watercolor after I came back home. As always, when I go out and sketch, I bring too many things and the only thing that I used was that Lamy Safari pen and this new sketchbook which I bought at the local art store which we um, just chanced upon and I haven't used Kadi papers before so this was really exciting and I was super happy to be sitting down on this bench beside the river and um, just sketching Prague. It was so nice to sit there and just enjoy the sounds of the river and the city and also some ducks.
The only downside was that it started to get quite cold and started drizzling so the ink didn't even have time to dry and then um, water got on the page and it started smudging. So this ink that I'm using is actually Noodler's ink which I always use and it is waterproof if you give it enough time to absorb into the paper and to really dry off. So I was a little bit disappointed when it started to rain. It's raining. <laughs>
But the good thing is, I get to paint this little sketch at home and relive that trip to Prague. So I haven't really seen any of these Kadi sketchbooks here back here in Malaysia. So that's part of why I bought that sketchbook because it's quite hard to find. And now that I'm looking back at it, I think that wow, the paper is really thin and um, I'm used to using like thicker pages, um, like 300 GSM. So I was worried that that paper would um, like fold up or wrinkle up. So I used a clip to um, just hold it down. For this sketch, I will be using this Cotman Sketchers pocket box, which I did bring to Prague and never used. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's what happens, right? Plans don't always go as planned. So because the ink smudged in when I was um, sketching, I was actually a little bit apprehensive of applying water to this um, page. I, I thought maybe that ink would start to run because, uh, I don't know, I haven't used this paper before, but thankfully it seems to um, have dried completely and it is now water resistant, so the ink is not running at all. So I know some of you have had some problems with um, just using ink that you thought was waterproof and um, when you started painting with watercolor, it's, it smudged and even though it was uh, supposed to be waterproof. And um, I'm not sure about other inks, but with Noodler's ink, it does take some time to dry. So it's um, quite apparent in this video here that if you don't wait for it to dry, it will smudge quite quite a lot, actually. So yeah, if you are having problems with that, just try to let your ink dry for a longer time or try to use uh, fine liners like um, micro pens and those inks like dry instantly.
So the lighter green is mostly a mix of sap green and yellow ochre and that darker green is a mixture of that same um, lighter green mix plus some ultramarine. So I'm really loving this paper texture and um, that paper also stays wet for a very long time so I can um, really manipulate the paint on the page. Painting this small is also quite fun for me because there is less stress and you get it done much faster than when you do bigger sketches. So that pale green building is actually one of the main focal points of this sketch and I didn't want that green to be the same as 
the other trees. So uh, I mixed in a little bit of cerulean blue and I used a very, very light wash of that mixture of um, green. So that was uh, that came out pretty good and it actually looks quite similar to the pale green in the original building. So at the same time, I started to add some of those shadows. Um, this is a mixture of ultramarine plus burnt sienna and burnt umber. Sometimes I'm not really sure what I'm using because I'm just using those remnants of paint on my palette. So it just has to be a grayish blue or grayish brown color and you can use it as a shadow. So I um, it, when I paint these shadows, I always look at the photo and uh, determine where the light is coming from. And in this case, it's quite subtle. In the photo, you can see um, generally the left sides are brighter. And so I added a bit more shadow to the right sides and the right lower sides of those trees as well. So now I'm getting started with the roofs and um, I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna with a little bit of remnants of paint on my palette. So it's uh, generally slightly, slightly less saturated than the original burnt sienna. And I am trying to leave some spots on mostly towards the left and uh, those spots are acting like little highlights and now you can see i'm adding a little bit of that alizarin crimson and i'm trying to make that roof stand out a little bit more so that building right there is my focal point i want people to just get their i want their eyes to just really look at that main focal point and so i'm adding a little bit of interest and it's just a little bit of a, a just a slight touch just to make it a little bit more interesting
For this sketch, I thought that the reflections on the river were really fun to do and I used this small flat brush and uh, it is a Cotman synthetic brush so it was really handy to do these little reflections and I'm trying to do just very minimal strokes and I'm not trying to and I completely did not paint in the water and just going to leave it white and those strokes those little strokes there are actually the shadow the shadows of the trees and the buildings even so yeah it's a very minimalistic way of indicating that there's water so i really liked how this one turned out Now I'm painting the windows with some cerulean blue and usually windows are reflections, have reflections of the sky so I just use um, cerulean blue most of the time and I don't like paint in the whole window I actually leave quite a lot of white and that um, gives it a little bit more dynamic because there is actually a lot of reflections in windows. So now I'm painting that big tree in the foreground and I wet a few of the areas first before I paint them in. So in the picture you can see that the leaves at the top are generally smaller than leaves at the bottom. So it's good to try and get smaller strokes at the top and bigger strokes at the bottom. I really like the aesthetic that watercolor can give when you have both soft and hard edges. So that little bit of water that I applied on the paper before I started painting this tree um, facilitates making those soft edges because the paint will spread and spread into those wa um, wet 
areas and it will naturally create these soft edges and it also looks like the tree has um, light shining through it. After that, I added in the final touches, which is usually the darkest shadows. So I took a lot of pictures in Prague, which is such a picturesque city and the architecture is amazing and it's full of history and even the colors of the buildings look like they were planned out by an artist. So the whole city looks like a work of art and it's not just a functional city and efficient, but it is really super beautiful as well so i might be doing more sketches of prague in the future and i didn't have a lot of time to sketch there on site so i am looking forward to revisiting those pictures and to sketching all those beautiful places Overall, I really really enjoyed the sketch and I love how the paint looks on this paper. So I'm really excited with this new sketchbook and it's just the first page, but I love it already.
Alright, so if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful to you, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. I would love to hear your comments about this sketch or this video about Prague. And if you have any recommendations for future videos, do comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.